hello, hello. This is the project file for my track called Hiccups, which came out last year on Wisdom Teeth. Let's dive into it. So here we've got a nice tidy drums group with all of the usual suspects. Down here we've got some of the fun scratches and orchestral hits which appear throughout and then we have the bass split into three which we'll get into as well as just a couple of simple sort of effects. Um, some of the keen eyed of you may have noticed that it's slightly off grid and there is a reason for that and we'll get into it later. But let's just kick things straight off. So right at the top here we have this little Atmos thing. Now this, you might not even be able to hear it, is just a really low level fizz, which sort of, when combined with everything else, adds a little bit of a noise in the background. I think some of the best records ever made are really, really noisy. I mean, think about all the rhythm and sound stuff, it just sounds like it's just drenched in it. So it's kind of nice sometimes to do a bit of artificial stuff on your own. Um, it's side chained to the master so that when everything else is going, sort of ducks out a little bit. I mean, it's barely, barely perceptible, but sometimes it's nice. Um, so here we have the drums, which is where I guess quite a lot of the energy in the track comes from. Um, let's have a look at the kick. So here we have the lower thumpy one, and that's a click. It's a little bit of a subtle bit of uh, sort of whatever high end in there. Uh, here I've got some hats which are all, in fact I think most of the drums really are from this six DR660 which I got from this site here. Um, I mean I love this site, it's basically just got everything. Definitely check it out. Um, so back into the hats, pretty straightforward couple of things in there, like a little gate, just to keep them a bit tappier. A short delay as well, it's just sort of worked. A little bit of chorus with some spread, and yeah, that's sort of it. The snare's pretty straightforward as well, just the 606 ones with two channels, one just for the offbeat ones. those guys there and then we've got some symbols and these fun sort of flexi tone things which appear throughout now these are quite well processed as in I've used a lot of effects on them um, something I like to do you can see here it says hoot flute shakers or it would if it was written in full something I like to do when I'm doing tracks is when I make like a cool chain of effects or something that I like, I will save it and use it for later. So this is what I've done on a track of mine called Hoot Flute. I liked the effects I had on the shakers, which is like some short echoes and a phaser, which I've turned off actually in this case, but just give it a nice little bit of stereo thing. That's quite nice. Some other sounds I didn't use. That one's quite fun. Anyway, shakers, these sort of fit real nice together. I got quite lucky with the samples here. The ones I picked seem to just work quite well. Um, I think a lot of that is because they're from the same kit. Sometimes that's a really good way of making sure that everything is nice and tidy. This, this is a tip. This is something I do a lot um, to give something a bit of like sharp stereo sort of work is yeah this like just a really short delay time on either channel and then you can sort of if you wanted to you could mess around with it to give it oh yeah you can even do like a maybe not the best example but a lot of fun to be had there similar thing i think is happening with these guys which are the sort of 
other shakers sitting really nicely in the stereo with again another sort of variation of this hoop flute shaker some light EQing and compressing to the kick if we take these off we'll be able to see it's actually almost more of just a mix down preference I think just placing it somewhere different but all come together sounds good and then this drum bus is just the Mableton built-in thing which is always great <laughs> Oh, sounds so much worse without it anyway so those are the drums the next thing that we can have a look at is the bass so the bass was obviously quite an important part of this tracks important part of most uh, most dance music tracks really um, and for this one as you can see it's got, I've got like a, a sample here of something that I've frozen so it's something I made somewhere else and then put it into Ableton Sampler, which I like to use a lot because I'm just familiar with it. Um, and I like the control that you can get, put some pitch envelopes on it. The shapers are always pretty good and the modulation which gets used in these other channels here is nice and simple for my brain as well. Um, so the way that I actually made the bass was <laughs> from this uh, YouTube tutorial where a guy with a very serious voice makes some really cool bass lines. I believe this is free, PG8X. I can't remember for sure though. Um, once I'd made it, I basically just sampled a chunk of it. Added the pitch shift to it, and it really didn't need much else. I think there's a little bit of a room reverb that comes in later, but doesn't, yeah, I mean, nothing's really happening except for a side chain from the kick. The MIDI is really simple. It's obviously kind of got a bit of release on it. Just sounded really nice. So after this section, we've got the uh, the more classic wobble pit. Uh, yeah, really, again, really easy. Just using it all with an Ableton sampler. I like it a lot. Similar thing, sort of happening here, where it slows down a bit. Same sample, just the, you know, slower. Now this sort of breakdown section here with the bass is where things start to get a little bit interesting and is where the slightly offbeat nature of, or the off-grid nature of everything comes together a bit more. So there's a bit of automation on the bass line here as it sort of just filters out. As you can hear, And what I've done is I'd actually resampled a part of this bass to make it to make this sort of uh, ox pull out moment here a bit smoother to do. So by just being able to work with it in audio, it was easier to just make really raw cuts <laughs> to make it sound like it's really just being yanked out of the wall. <laughs> Uh, this, in combination with just quite a simple sample, treated in a similar way of just an electric guitar amp cable, uh, made that a little bit there. And the fun thing about this is, is that because here everything is just a little bit off beat, it lands straight back in here, which means that for obsessive users of record box, it will be really annoying because <laughs> it comes in a little bit off grid, a bit like a hiccup, if you will, or maybe you don't want to, that is also fine. Um, but that's just a little nice, fun little touch that I like. So that was the bass. 
the orchestral stabs were pretty simple as well. I mean, this is just a simple sample I had in my library, probably on every keyboard that was in any uh, any school throughout the country here. Um, and then there's a little layer which I did add through an actual keyboard just to give it a bit more high end on this. Just, that's a bit low, but you get them both together and it's nice. So another fun thing that I did with these is this reverse sort of uh, lead up to the orchestral hit here, which is quite subtle, but I think it adds a little bit of movement. So the way I did this was, I don't know exactly which one, but I would have put a, a reverb onto it. And then once I have the reverb on it, you can effectively like record that into a new channel and bounce it to audio and then reverse it. Um, I think this is quite a big one in like the EDM world. So let's reverse it back. So here you'll be able to hear how it sounds when I affected it. Yeah, so that's just a fully wet reverb signal, which was reversed. And just leads in nicely bit of fun. All right, moving on from those, we'll have a look at the scratches. These were just, again, like with most of my tracks, really just a fortunate happening across some nice samples. They're just really silly, <laughs> scratchy samples with a lot of effects on them. Um, I guess the most important things that are happening here really is these short delays with um, well, this short delay with the frequency shifter, just giving it its like right tone, which sits nicely in with everything else. Something else which is nice and were quite easy were these effects. So, oh, this is interesting. This is the bass. I forgot about that. Sometimes it's nice to use sounds that are already existing for other purposes, so a really high-pitched bass for an effect. This is just a sample. It just sit really nicely, and I think the same with this. It's just a little bit of a noise effect, which might be the Atmos section up here, just stretched out. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Same with this. Just a very simple zap. Bring that in. Obviously having a little bit less delay earlier on. And the other thing that's important, particularly with effects and a lot of the rest of the other parts of the tracks is these guys, which are actually pretty underutilized here. Um, I like these splashy spring reverbs a lot. So a long one, short one's cool. An echo, and I don't think the parallel compression is used much here, but you know, sends are great, use them. <laughs> Some other samples to take a look at is this. <laughs> it's pretty random, not sure why it's there, but there we go. And I think that's pretty much everything. Um, let me know if you've got any questions and I hope you enjoyed having a look at this far too long video. Thank you.